Hello and welcome. I'd like to talk in this video about uh, the next generation coil design. And this um, coil design is actually the result of years of research and also based on what I found from my investigation with ferrite material. So this information I did provide is technically not new. We know that ferrite has specific properties, but not only ferrite, any material which is influenced via a magnetic field. They can be copper, they can be aluminium. <coughs> we ha you have seen that all. All of them have various properties when they are energized via a magnetic field and then they act upon this field and we have some kind of reaction which goes back, feedback into the coil system or is opposing, for example, a magnetic field from a permanent magnet. So what I have here is, and that's very important, I have designed a new coil. I will go later into the stage of this, uh, explaining this a little bit. This design has been done already in the past. It's not, it's not that it is completely new, but you have never seen an explanation why they did such design. And basically, from a transformer point of view, this design is technically useless because under transformer rule, this coil does not work and I will explain that as well. So I use as energy source, no energy source. I use a pure voltage source. What does that mean? So I use still <coughs> the circuitry because it's quite convenient, but the circuitry will not be connected to any kind of power source. We are using the signal generator here in high impedance mode. That means I get a pure voltage of 5 volt. The principle, you can look it up, is called voltage bridging. Voltage bridging means that I use a high impedance um, source or signal and drive it into a low impedance load. <coughs> Our coil here is a low impedance load. Our signal is a high impedance source. So we have 5 volt, it's a CMOS signal, and we have 1 million ohm high impedance on that signal. That means it gives me a maximum, if we talk about power, right? If we talk about power, what power can be actually transmitted? Technically almost zero. In fact, from, from Ohm's law, we know that 5 volt can, under, with, with an impedance of 1 mega ohm, can deliver a maximum of 5 microampere. 5 microampere. If we multiply that with the voltage of 5 volt, we get 25 microwatt. So that is the power we are putting into the system to take that into consideration. Now, we have done that before. I want to demonstrate that actually this voltage source cannot drive an LED load. Something about LED load is also very important for you to note, and there are some other examples I will give you in a minute. LEDs are unidirectional. That means they can only sync source power if the, the current goes in a correct position into the LED load. Otherwise, they can't sync. Otherwise, they don't illuminate. They behave like a normal diode. If the voltage flow or current flow is in the wrong direction, there is no current flow at all. So that means we are using technically with an LED only half of the wave in an AC circuit, if, um, if, if that makes sense. So if we take our sine wave signal here, as you can see here, we have a square wave at the moment 53 kilohertz. That's for example at 5 volt and we getting out of course the RMS value is 1.5 volt and the half wave only of the signal if we go through would be 2.5 volt but because we have a voltage stop bear in mind it is still a sinking source it will drop the voltage it drops the voltage and that's what I measure on a capacitor to 2.076 volt 2.076 volt is for my 5 to 6 volt load not enough to illuminate it. So what can we do to use this voltage source to illuminate it? We have seen that in the past we can use Tesla coils, but Tesla coils are also 
lousy in converting energy, even if, if it's a low voltage source, it is possible, yes, but it's still lacking. And what it lacks, I will explain um, um, uh, at a later um, section in, my, in this video um, what I mean by that. So I can scroll through here to the frequency, it doesn't really um, matter, sorry, doesn't really matter. It stays as it is and it doesn't change at all and you see here we have no benefit at all if, if I go very fast up. Nothing will change, we stay in that value, it will not illuminate the load. Now, <coughs> you remember this coil, this is a nanoperm coil, that was the one I was using in my experiments before and did demonstrate to you that that has very special properties. <coughs> this coil is, 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 is produced or designed with two materials. It uses nanoperm, it's a nanocrystal and has also a matte glass in it like the other cores as well. So it has two different furnace or iron based materials in it in different consistency. One is amorphous, it's a liquid form, it's not crystalline matte glass and the one is crystalline as nanoperm but the crystals are so small that they don't um, produce any resistance um, to or uh, create any eddy current or hysteresis. So they, have, they are ideal technically, but they are iron based. <coughs> what we have on this coil is technically, oh, okay, in the first glance it's an air coil, so it wouldn't help us at all, but it is actually not, and I will go later on to, this, uh, to the stage to explain what that actually is, what I did actually build here. So now after I connected here, as you can see, I connected here only from the signal generator, the signal, I will now connect here this transformer into just normal LED transformer driving circuitry where I use a primary winding to the secondary winding which is one to one as it is one to one over here and try to drive this load now. I have now connected this coil to the circuitry so we are using the primary winding or whatever winding you want to use because it's a one-to-one -one coil it doesn't really matter only very important is to note that you have to use the correct um, um, coil position or the uh, uh, correct one which is marked with a red dot which is then the one for which you are connecting your positive lead of your um, voltage or power source if you want. So this one is creating, so you see this curve has changed and we see here we see here the back EMF or the curve which is losing. We are, we are at 500 microwatt currently and we are going to close to um, 5 volt. This is good however, LED does not lit up but it should not be really our indication but for, for this purpose here I want to demonstrate that a normal transformer and just a normal um, um, load connected or LED load connected to a signal generator does not work. It cannot produce anything and I can scroll here through the frequency and here if you want. Yes we get a little bit more higher out here but it's, it's only the flickering here you can get this one but that is from, from, from the signal generator when I go through the frequency that it hits a little bit up here and I get a little bit light out. So nothing's working here and as you can see here, I stay in a micro watt range, which is actually much higher than one. But you have to also bear in mind that this current probe is not suited really to measure accurately this low current. This requires minimum, it says 2 milliampere or 10 milliampere to measure accurately. Everything below it, it does not measure correctly. So if we take these values here, it is fairly low. but there is not more on the system and as you can see here the voltage drops. We don't have enough voltage actually available to drive this load. Now I'm gonna connect my designed coil. I have now connected um, the load to this coil and, um, and as you can see, I will talk to that um, in, in a second, we have on a capacitor now stored over 5 volt which is required to drive this load. I'm at 45 kilohertz for example and you can see we have 5.4 milliwatt. I will go later on to the multiplication of power, where does the power come from and so on. But 
what I can say so far, from 25 microwatt to 5 milliwatt is a tremendous amount, but it's not going to stop there. But first of all, a word to this coil. So this coil is built with very special materials. When I say special materials, I mean materials it's not easy for you to get and if you get them you have to pay a tremendous amount of money. Starting with the coils. The coil you see here, this is one coil among many coils I have, it's a multiple coil system here. This coil here is silver braided. It has silver core inside of it and this is 120 meter for example and it measures not even 2 ohm resistance. So it's very very low in resistance and so on. It is also not really an air core. It contains fairness materials but again this material I use in here and I don't use ferret uh, rods or cubes or slabs or whatever you want. This core is, is empty as, as you can see here. There's nothing inside. There's a special material you can buy. It is extremely expensive, but that was a material I was using. I was actually looking for many years. I tried various materials to improve the permeability of Tesla coils. And that's a different subject. I will go into that in a later stage where I show how we can improve Tesla coils actually for the wireless energy transfer. But for the sake of argument, let's just say I use this material. I use a couple of them wound this one on this core. It's just a normal um, plastic pipe you can buy in any DIY store. And then use this various coils in various directions, various materials, various strengths and so on. So another thing you have to know, you don't use this as a standard transformer. A standard transformer would use let's say a 1 to 2 winding ratio between primary and secondary. We have here 1 to 1 ratio first of all. Second of all, I don't create a direct connection between primary and secondary. What do I mean by that? What I mean by that is that I use single wires. As you can see here, I use a single wire and you can imagine that I use the same color coloring here. Technically this is the same coil and here black black, this is the same coil and here is a silver braided um, uh, coil. It's, it's another coil. So I don't, I don't use them. So we have technically one wire connected and we are using one wire to create this kind of output to our load. Now, I want to show you something very, very interesting. So just to make sure that you see here there's nothing collected. What I connected here on this one is only the DMMs and I can measure the, the voltage on the capacitor. The system is highly sensitive to stray capacitance because it is technically very close to an air core, but we can influence that can be influenced by that as well. That needs to be really shielded um, in an in a working environment. Having said that, magnets don't influence to a great deal this coil. So I can use magnets inside. It shifts slightly, yes, but not to a great deal. So that's the good news. Now I make some another um, um, configuration here and I will go up in a frequency and show you the real, the real magic happening. Now I just increase the frequency to 9.5 megahertz and I will not go through the great detail but I connect various coils to each other still there is a single connectivity but what you can see here and that is an, a different subject which has been used and is in use for all transformer circuitry. We are talking about a power factor. What is a power factor? A power factor is helping you to align current to the voltage and actually using the unused current in a different cycle of the negative cycle of a sine wave to store in a runtime capacitor to provide it then to the transformer or to a motor in order to have a higher efficiency. So that would be a stored energy in a runtime capacitor which, uh, which actually then provides then a better efficiency to a motor or transformer which is then, which is then measured in, in, in a term called power factor. You can look it up. So the power factor is very, very important, especially for driving LEDs.
And here, as I said, we are using only partially of the waveform LED. Here, I use only a small part of the waveform, which can be used actually to illuminate the slope, but that's not relevant. What you can see here is that I use great from this signal core, and I will put it um, in a little formula for you then in this video, 100 milliwatt, 100 milliwatt from 25 microwatt. I will do the math for you. That is a multiplication factor it has. So where does this energy come from? And that's a very important subject. If I say it comes from the field around it, it's right, but I want to be more precise. It comes from the energy around this field, and that energy means it draws the energy or heat from the environment. So one indicator is, and you have re read that so many times, but you never, it has never been explained to you in details, and, and especially it has never been demonstrated to you in details. But I can point out one example which is a scientifically proof that it exists. MIT did conduct a test with low power LEDs and was able to create more light output than energy put in. And they also could measure that the LED, we're talking about picoampere values here, it's a very, very low energy value, but they could measure actually a decrease in temperature around that LED, where the LED did absorb the energy from the environment. It's not a bad thing. Look about all the systems where we produce so much heat and we have to get rid of heat. If you use such a system, which actually extracts the heat and converts it into energy, we are using such system actually for all the um, um, space missions, where energy is converted from a nuclear power source into energy, however in a very wasteful fashion. If we have something like that and we have waste energy or heat, if you want, we can actually absorb all this heat and create an energy in a much more efficient way. And if I look at 100 milliwatt creation yeah, from uh, this little core, and it gets cold, and, and I, will, I will show then demonstration with higher power level that we can see this actually in a, in a, in a, in a better way. And there's also something about the magnetic field, which is here completely different to other one. I will produce a very specific spectrum analyzer, and I will get to show you what happens in the coil when we move it around in a different ways to adapt to the power factor, and and what implication it has, and what implication it on harmonies has in a frequency band. So that gives you a bit of an explanation. Um, about the next generation of coil. This is an experimental coil. We haven't done any calculation to, um, to, to build it. It's only based on the principle I was thinking about how to adapt and change the magnetic field flux in a system. And as you can see, it works, but it can be done in a much more um, precise manner where we use really, really uh, precise measurements of coils in various directions to specific material and can do an analysis. So that would be something which is reserved for my members, where I can go into detail in this coil and we will use a power source, but we mainly will use only voltage for driving it. And based on that factor, I'm very confident based on that factor, this system will be self-running. Thank you.